Hi everyone. In this part, we're going to discuss in full detail the duct construction process and procedure, and we're going to focus on the following points. Duct seams and joints, which are used to assemble the duct sheet metal, duct gauge and sheet metal thickness, and how to use it to obtain further details related to duct construction. Duct reinforcement and when is it required and when is it not required and when you can use this to save a lot of money in your project. Duct hangers and supports, duct sealing and duct leakage test, painting of the duct, coating of the duct and duct white rust. Rectangular duct can be reinforced or non-reinforced. As we can see here in this figure, we have the reinforced duct on the left side of the screen which consists mainly of three parts part number one which is the sheet metal of the duct itself and part number two which is the longitudinal seams longitudinal seams are used to assemble the sheet metal of the duct on the longitudinal axis hence they are called longitudinal and transfer joints are used to assemble the boxes of the duct because usually duct is fabricated in five feet or 1.2 meter so it needs to be assembled in boxes by transfer joint However, there is sometimes where you need to reinforce your duct. In this case, you need to apply between two transfer joint and intermediate reinforcement. As we can see here on the right side of the screen, you have your duct, which have the longitudinal seams and the transfer seams and joints, which are shown in here as joint. It's referred to as joint. And between the two joints, you have intermediate reinforcement. So the construction process of the duct defines all the detail related to the sheet metal and the joints and the reinforcement of the duct. So let's go to the arrangement of this process step by step. You will start, you will need to start to define the duct gauge and the duct pressure classifications as your first step. Once you have specified the duct gauge, you can obtain the duct sheet metal thickness. Once you obtain the duct sheet metal thickness, you can go to the following step, which is to define if reinforcement is required or no. If reinforcement is not required, you will go to the following step, which is to define and specify the seams and joints connecting the duct pieces and to define its type, gauge and size. If reinforcement is required, you will go to a table which will tell you the reinforcement details, including the spacing, the gauge, the type and the size of the reinforcement. Afterwards, directly, you will go back to the seams and joints of the duct to specify their type, gauge and size. Once you reach the seams and joints of the duct, you need to know that you have two types as we discussed earlier of seams and joints, transverse joints and longitudinal seams. As we discussed earlier, longitudinal seams are used to connect the longitudinal sheet metal of the duct on the longitudinal side, however transverse joints are used to connect the boxes of the duct. Transverse joints consist of two main types, slip type or flange or joint type. Slip type consists of three further types c slip s slip and standing slip c slip and s slip and standing slip they are named based on their shape as we will show you in the following pages however the flange or joint is usually using flanges and sorts of gasket to prevent any leakage these are the most commonly used transfer joints and in almost 70 to 80 percent of the projects you will use either c slip or s slip and the transfer joints however on the longitudinal seams you have four main types which are the pittsburgh lock the button punch snap lock the standing seam and the grooved seam but in almost 90 percent of the cases you will find the pittsburgh lock is the preferred method to be used and the longitudinal seams as well as and the transfer joints you will find the always almost always the c slip and s slip this is a figure obtained from smacna duct construction standards which summarizes the process and gives you an indication that it's all interconnected once you get the duct width you go to specify the duct sheet metal thickness and duct pressure gauge and then go to check if there is reinforcement required or no and then you go to check if there is certain requirement for the reinforcement spacing or no after this you only need to specify the type and the specifications of the joints and seams and then you have completed the duct construction process in accordance to smack now.